Good evening. This is CTV News for Monday, November 18th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Rochelle Metzger. Glad to have you with us tonight. It's estimated that more than 2 million people have been left homeless by Typhoon Haiyan, which hit the Philippines. Efforts continue to get emergency aid to survivors who desperately need food and other basics. Locally, many groups have been holding food and clothing drives to help out. And today, U.S. Senator Ben Cardin, who heads the subcommittee on East Asian and Pacific Affairs, held a roundtable discussion to talk about what's being done federally and to assist those affected. want to very much uh, reach out and try to do everything we can on the immediate side to provide relief to people who are in desperate situations and then uh, help participate to try to return as much to normalcy as, as quickly as we possibly can. We know it's going to be a long road. So there's a need for uh, temporary shelters like tents, trauma injuries, other acute medical conditions, disruption of treatment for severe acute malnutrition and for severe chronic disease, lack of sufficient food, access to sanitation. Let me just point out that the first two medical missions that were in Tacloban and Panawan, which were the most severely affected, came from the U.S. Over 3,600 people were killed when the storm hit the Philippines earlier this month. Citing his record in leading Maryland schools to the number one spot, among other accomplishments, Senator Ben Cardin today announced his endorsement of Anthony Brown for governor. Cardin calls Brown a dynamic leader. In a statement, Cardin goes on to say that he has worked with the lieutenant governor for the last seven years and admires his character and commitment to service. With his endorsement, Cardin joins others in Maryland's congressional delegation in supporting Brown in the June Democratic primary. In addition, State House Speaker and several former attorneys general have also thrown their support behind Brown. An increase in the minimum wage may sound like a good idea to most people, but the Prince George's Chamber of Commerce is saying not so fast. The county council is considering a bill that would increase the base pay workers earn from $7.25 an hour to $11.65. But Chamber President David Harrington says he wants to work with members to come up with a plan. This bill, at the end of the day, calls for a 43% increase from $7.25 to $11.60. That's something that business overnight cannot, cannot uh, you know, stand up to and, and hold. So what we're suggesting is, is that for somebody like a Six Flags who hired thousands of youth and those dollars go toward their college education or be able to have some spending money, um, we're just saying, look, let's hold them harmless. Um, and they pay already above 725. So every business that I've talked about pays above 725 an hour. Uh, and so what we're saying is that in those cases, let's hold them harmless. Um, and we know who you're going after uh, in terms of some of the larger, larger big box businesses. But 70% of our members of small businesses would be severely hurt by this. Harrington wants to come up with a plan that would benefit all sides. Tomorrow is the council's last legislative session for this year. That means if members don't pass the minimum wage bill, it would have to be reintroduced again next year. Well, have you heard of hookah pens? That this is what they look like, and they are pretty popular among teens. Mark Covington, the principal at Samuel Ogle Middle School in Bowie, recently sent out a letter to parents warning them about the device. This after two students were caught using pens at school. The pens do not contain nicotine or, toba or tobacco, but they function like electronic cigarettes. Covington says the pen vaporizes a liquid and then is smoked like a cigarette. In my mind, it's kind of like a training device for the kids, leading them to e-cigarettes and other tobacco products. Check their book bags, check their rooms every once in a while. We don't want to live in a police state, but at the same time, um, the people who want to sell our kids these things have the advantage, um, and we need to do what we can to, to really address it. And Cummington tells us that the hookah pens can be easily bought at local convenience stores. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Rochelle Metzger.